Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 85. Oh, you smell that? That's right. Here in the United States of America, there is elections in the air. It is fall, and I'm joined by the gorgeous Angela Fisher. Big hair today. Big hair. I like it, though. It's like boss-level hair. <laughs> like, if uh, you were ever to become an, uh, a supervillain, your hair like would be all big be and, part like, of it, and yeah. blowing in the air and yep. wind and stuff when you're yelling at people. Yep. Uh, and to keep things in check while uh, we're distracted by the politics of the day, to keep us focused on the tech is our... Oh, i got to come up with a good name for me. My that. heroic posse. Angela's heroic posse, our mumble room. Time-appropriate greetings, mumble room. hey Citations. Uh, Marty. Oh, I voted, but most of the people running didn't have an opponent. Oh. Hmm. That's sad, Eric. Yeah. That's sad. It is sad. I'll tell Southeast you about... Southeast County, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here is... Uh, I'll tell you about a category where there's lots of opponents, lots of competition, and maybe a little less choice now. And that's in your cloud storage, because today, Amazon has announced that Prime members, if you're an existing Amazon Prime member, that's you, Angela, now get free, unlimited, online photo storage. Free, unlimited online storage. That's a benefit for existing Prime subscribers. If you use Amazon Cloud Drive on any device, including iOS, Android, Fire Phones, tablets, as well as Mac and Windows PCs. Not so sure about the Linux. Hmm. Not sure if you need a special client. These Windows. photos can be viewed on these devices. You'll back it up from those devices, as well as any a device that has the Cloud uh, Player app, which is like the Fire TV, the Fire TV Stick, game consoles like the PS3 and PS4. Some Samsung and LG TVs could view the photos from the storage. All right, so two things. What's the privacy catch? Well, yeah, two, yeah, exactly. Two things that come to my mind. First, what do the TNCs look like? Second, are they just trying to lose money? I mean, like they yeah. just posted that they, you know, yeah. the huge, huge loss, and they're like, free photo storage for everybody. Yeah, I, know, right? I know, I know, I know. That is crazy. Uh, you know what it is though is. I, I think they they have so much resources and storage just to run their own store that they, they can kind of they can hedge on some of this stuff. The c- privacy questions and all of this stuff is always a really, really great question when it's anything like this. What's Amazon's primary motive for shipping a service like this? Uh, there's other things out there, too, that kind of do this. Uh, Picture Life is one that sort of just focuses on only the cloud storage, but they charge. Uh, and the app looks kind of decent, too. You can zoom through your timeline. This is interesting to me. Are you thinking that I should do that? Me too. Well, you know... So I have my photo library on my computer, which is running out of room because it's 500 gigabytes, and my photo library itself is 375 gigabytes right now. Yeah. Um, But I also have it on a a solid-state SSD. That's actually where I run it from, and and it's actually uh, the most updated, the one on my computer actually is missing the last couple months. Which is external to your machine. Right. And so the SSD is, uh, yeah, external. And then I have um, Crash Plan backing up. Uh-oh. What? Is it backing up the SSD? Yes. Okay, good. Because I, I just realized that I don't know if we ever told it to, that the pictures were somewhere else now. <laughs> yes, it's backing up the SSD. So it would be cool to add Amazon there. I know. It's almost like, well, you get it for free because you already have Prime, so quote unquote free. And you could add that as another alternative backup location. If something ever happened to Crash Plan, you've got it in another copy. This seems really appealing. Of course, the devil's going to be in the details. You got to look right. into that. This was just announced uh, before we went on air, so yeah, some of the so details are still developing. If you want to read about it, go to Amazon.com forward slash Prime Photos. Yep, Amazon, and it's all part of the Amazon Cloud Drive. TechCrunch has a big long article about it. Uh, it's interesting. Mumble Room. Anybody uh, going to jump on this? I like the idea as a Prime subscriber, but skeptical Eric is skeptical. I think Eric just doesn't want his nudies up there. <laughs> Could be. True. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> boy, I know some of you don't get this in your neck of the woods. Lionhead, is this even available to you? I have no clue. Amazon and all that is, at least not in Norway, even a thing, I think. Yeah. Lionhead, your sticker's coming. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'd be curious to see. I, I guess we're going to check it out, aren't we? We're going to check it out, probably for Ange, because it sounds like you're down. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's important. I mean, your photos are important to you, and you want to get those backed up. Yeah. I just hope that it's like that I can point the Amazon Cloud to that SSD hard drive. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You ready for something that really reminds you that this is 2014? This is really crazy. It's called Nixie. It's a wearable camera drone. I want to say that again. A wearable camera drone. 
and it just got a whole bunch of money for Intel for how awesome it is, beating nine other entries in the final U.S.-based team behind the awesome wrist-based flying camera. They got $500,000 in prize money. It only requires a flick of the arm, at which point the drone unfolds from your wrist, flies off, takes a picture, and returns. You open up your smartphone. Okay, check this out. That's cool. This is super cool, I think. All right, here, I'll play a little bit of the video for you guys. It's like a boomerang. You can see it in action. This is so neat. In this series, we profile the Make It Wearable finalist team. If you don't have a personal photographer, if you don't have a personal videographer following you around most of the time, how do you capture those most special moments? So this is the Make It Wearable series. I'm the team leader of Nixie. I've been a tinkerer all my life and I always loved being in my workshop, just building stuff. Christoph came over one day and he said, I have a new idea for a quadcopter. And he looked at me with this mischievous grin and he said, I want to make your quadcopter wearable. And I thought, what? <laughs> Let's just build a flying wristband that can give aerial photography to you. You should be able with the gesture to tell the quadcopter to unfold and then it's going to take off from your wrist. It knows where you are, it turns around, takes a picture of you, comes back, you can catch it from the air and put it back on your wrist. So we are preparing to prototype with uh, the Intel Edison chip and here's a little test setup where we can measure exactly the power we need to create a specific lift. So the Edison chip is basically an entire computer that fits in something the size of an SD card. It's it's several you know in terms of performance it's several years old in performance but it's an, it's an x86 platform that is a system on a chip that fits in something the size of an SD card and that's what they're using to power this wearable freaking drone. This is really cool. This will take selfies to a whole new level. <laughs> That's what oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. The video started with, yeah. you know, everybody's awkward MySpace arm in the, right. in the picture. Right, right, yeah. Well, and picture like us, like we're at the pumpkin patch, and we always have to get right. some sh- some some nice person. Well, first I try a fence post, right. and, I, and I make it look as awkward as possible. Right, so, so that, that way we make a big, yeah. says, <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to take that picture for you? And we, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I totally uh, wasn't expecting it. So now you would me. just <laughs> flick your wrist, uh, and uh, now here's the flip side. You gotta figure a lot of cops would have this, things like that. They might yeah. have more stronger versions. Immediate crowd control. They flip their wrist and boom, little drones go off. Little taser darts on them. Oh my god. Unidentified gosh. flying selfies. Right. <laughs> that is a great title. Okay, so I just thought that was super neat. I don't who knows if this is gonna come to market, but they just got five hundred thousand dollars from Intel. Wow. Yeah, so we might actually see something like this. It is a brave new world we are moving into. UFS. UFS? Mm-hmm. Unidentified flying oh, selfies. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, speaking of an identified uh, flying selfie, our Patreon page. I don't know. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't know where you're going with nope. that. And nope, you didn't. No. Okay. So I still haven't updated our milestones, but uh, there's been a recent. You know, I talk a lot about Patreon as a platform for us to sort of diversify the income sources for Jupiter Broadcasting so that way we don't have one particular model. So if something goes away, we're not sort of left high and dry. We, we want to be in this for the long haul. And, we, and by crowdfunding, we can sort of diversify the income sources and guarantee that we could pull through if something bad happens. And it gives us leverage to pick the right sponsors. I've talked about that before and how your involvement at patreon.com slash today makes that reality. But something happened recently. Actually, last night I found out that friends of the Linux Action Show, Linux Outlaws, are calling it a day. Linux Outlaws is ending uh, oh, in wow. five episodes. Wow. And, you know, it, I don't know. And I listened to the episode where they announced it. And to me, it kind of sounded like over time their attention and passions drifted away. They are not able, they were not able and have not and are no longer able to dedicate themselves full time to their, to their project because it's not, the, it doesn't ha- it's not how they make a living. The, the thing is, Patreon is going to enable a new generation of new media creators to dedicate themselves to making their, not only their passion but actually to making it what they do so that way they don't grow away from it. That way they grow with it and make it stronger. And that's why... I, I really think what we're kind of experimenting with here at Jupiter Broadcasting is a recipe that you're going to see a lot of podcasters kind of come up with 
over the next year or so. In fact, it's already beginning to happen. Some other large podcast networks are now finding this mix works well, where you can you have some commercial sponsors for the shows that are appropriate. You audience and crowdfund in other areas and for new projects and new developments. That way you stay true and genuine to your audience, and we're able to dedicate ourselves, budget, plan, and have a little runway. And provide variety. It makes a it, it makes such a huge difference, and you can take a little bit of part of that over at patreon.com slash today. It helps all of our shows. Thank you to all 406 of you. And uh, let's see. Can you see the activity? Can you click on the activities? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not logged in right now. I don't know if you have to be logged in. Ta-da! Oh, you, oh, you made that public, I huh? did. Very cool. Yeah, that was some concept art that we uh, considered for the show, but opted not to go with it and shared with the patrons recently. Yep. Which I'm kind of glad we didn't go with that one. Yeah. Well, the comments are great. So go to the Patreon page, check that out, read yeah. the comments, see if it's something that you want to be part of. Patreon.com slash today, you can see that concept art and uh, talk about it and laugh at my face. which yeah. <laughs> Blue face. Yeah. Although my hair looks great blue, I got to say. Got to <laughs> say. All right, Ange, I'm pretty disappointed. I want to do a little follow-up coverage because we never gave it full discussion in the show. Uh, but Ars Technica has one of the first comprehensive reviews of the Google Nexus Player. It's a new play, a new device that uh, Google announced uh, recently, just right before the new iPhones came out. And it supports Plex. So it's wow. sort of a Roku competitor. It's got Android apps on there. You can get it with a $40 controller. Hmm. Uh, the reviews, okay. though, not good. Yeah. I'll tell you why I canceled my order after I tell oh you what Oh, my about gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, we really need... More things that play media in our house. Holy crap! Well, this is this is a this gives you the Android version of Plex, which is a nicer version of Plex. It's easier to use. Okay. And remember, we've had some Roku problems recently. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe it's time to replace it. So, Ugh. and I thought if anybody's going to get this right, it's going to be a Nexus version of this because Google has learned. Google did the Google TV. They were burned by it. They learned, right? <laughs> they they did the, that that weird player that nobody liked. So here's the here's the components for ninety nine dollars, which is a pretty good price. You get a set-top box remote control that has voice search. For another $40, you also get the gamepad. All right, so it's about $105 over the Chrome stick, but this also has Chromecast support and a Google Play with about 70 apps available. The launcher on the screen is custom-made for this, so if you sideload an app, it will not show up on the screen. Inside the puck is a 1.8 gigahertz Intel Atom processor, a Power VR Series 6 GPU, 1 gigabyte of RAM, and 8 gigabytes of storage. 8 gigabytes of storage... Only five gigabytes left usable when you get the device, so not a lot of room for apps, uh, which was a ding that uh, Ars Technica gave it. But here's the worst part. During two hours of continuous testing, the remote control continuously disconnected on them, <laughs> where they had to get up and go hit the oh, Bluetooth no. pairing button on the back of the thing. Yeah. No. Uh, no good on that. Uh, they say the five gigabytes of storage happen. leaves you with pretty much almost no room for more than one or two big games, making the controller kind of... Eight and, gigabytes? That's it? And only five gigabytes usable because the OS takes a couple. Right. Holy crap. Yeah. All the videos they tested, all of the videos they tested from different sources uh -huh. like YouTube, Google Play, Netflix, would drop flame frames. The frame <laughs> drops would be sort of random, they'd say, as if the Nexus player was just barely fast enough to run the video content. But as soon as the OS did anything in the background, the video would start to stutter like crazy. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if Abby was rewinding? I know, right? I know, she rewinding it over and over again. I am super bummed, and they also say the menus are laggy, the app store is hard to use. <sighs> it looks like a total flop from Google. So I canceled my order this morning. Well, good. Wait. You know, I got to say this, a first generation device, you never buy those. Yeah. Yeah, I but I felt like this wasn't a first generation device. Lionhead, what totally. did you think? No, um, I mean, I just recently bought a Raspberry Pi to run Rasplex, and that runs fantastically. I mean, uh, it has some issues, but it runs very well on all that I need to do on media from web services and all that with Plex and that's like $40 uh, uh, $50 or something like that so it's half the price and I have a computer I can play with <laughs> Right. yeah there's that there is that uh, I agree completely. It's a big shame uh, and it confirms all of the things I worried about. These devices are always so hit and miss and it's these kinds of things that make a, a, a good device and a bad device. So, too bad. 
Order canceled. I was looking forward to that. Uh, just a really quick note, uh, following up some of our coverage yesterday, uh, the UK spy chief goes public with an anti-encryption appeal to the US. Also, in a filter this week, we'll be talking about how uh, the Obama administration, the Justice Department, and the head of the FBI are working with the Senate Intelligence Committee and others to put some laws in place to dial back some of the encryption in Android and iOS. A lot's going on here right now. We're going to talk more about that unfilter from across the pond, writing the Financial Times newspaper, the GCHQ, that's the NSA version over there. Robert Hanning said that privacy has never been an absolute right for citizens and warns that terrorist groups like ISIS have embraced the Internet as a noisy channel in which to promote itself, intimidate people, and eradicate and radicalize new recruits. So he went on a, tri- a whole tirade talking about encryption and how we need to lock down the Internet. He says, as much as we may dislike it, speaking about tech companies, they've become command and control networks of choice for terrorist criminals who find themselves as these services as transformational as the rest of us has. So therefore, tech companies have to work with the government hand in hand because, after all, they're the ones who put themselves in this position. Wow. Pretty crap. Professional fear mongering. Yes. So more information about that in Unfilter, and uh, you can read about it yourself in the show notes if you like. And then uh, one last story to end on, the Internet archive is like the coolest resource ever and it just keeps getting even more cool uh if you're planning to be productive i'm sorry about this maybe you should tune out right now because the internet arcade or i'm sorry the internet archive just launched the internet arcade which is 900 classic games right in your browser they've been backing them up and saving Whoa. them over there adding look at all of those look at that i know it's a lot of games holy crap so let's go in here so i'll pick one. Oh, street fighter oh wait should totally pick street pitfall. fighter i'm gonna yep yep pitfall oh, there's a bunch of good ones in here okay so we're totes picking street fighter right now hubert and uh, so you go in here <laughs> and see so it, it checks your machine and it launches the emulator right up in your business in your browser so you don't got to do nothing too fancy so there we go now of course i wasn't very smart i didn't look at the key controls first but it starts muted too by the way so you have to go in there and unmute it and then and then that's that's the game right there in my in my web browser that is awesome yeah it's really neat so you can go check that out you guys we'll have a link to that in the show notes man i love the internet archive is this the gabby j yay <laughs> all right and then last <laughs> but not least oh <laughs> we got it we got a call to action for everybody go over to techtalktoday.reddit.com we have two submissions right now for our kickstarter of the week oh whichever one gets voted higher will present to our panel for judging. Okay. You still have a little bit of time to submit one, too, and maybe if you're organized, Am you get I a few people panel? click. Well, no, you are the judge, and the mumble room is the panel. Oh, okay. I'll be the moderator. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, trying to sell everybody, because that's what I do. And then uh, and we'll pick which one it is. There's two really great ones in the subreddit, so go check them out and then vote in the subreddit accordingly, or last chance to submit, since people are going to be checking it tonight, techtalktoday.reddit.com, and then tomorrow, our Kickstarter of the week. Sweet. Okay, boss, is there anything else we need to cover before we get out of here? Uh, flag swag mailed out yesterday yeah, to buddy. national and international folks. Yeah, buddy. So that's be, exciting. Be watching the mail for that. Yeah, so uh, p- that's for our uh, swag level supporters over mm-hmm. at the Patreon page. It's coming and, your way. And just so you know, they the post office only had Christmas wreath international stamps. So that's what's on them. So don't don't hate, don't get offended. It's it was my only choice. Hilarious. You know, happy holidays. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right everybody. Well, thank you for tuning this week's ep- or today's episode of Tech Talk today. We'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday. Angel will be here. We'll have our Kickstarter of the week and the news of the day. jblive.tv 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, jupiterbroadcasting.com/calendar. And don't forget techtalktoday.reddit.com. That's where to engage, submit stories, vote, and also pick our Kickstarter of the week. All right, so we have a theme this week, Ange. This is your first episode. It's all retro Nintendo stuff. Okay. So we're start. We're gonna do this one. I think this is like probably the one we should have started with, but we're gonna get it in right now. It's coming. New Super Game Boy from Nintendo. Play your Game Boy games on TV in living color. Combinations you choose, control, and change. All 350 Game Boy games like New Donkey Kong. New Super Game Boy for SNES. It's a whole new way to play.